Hello, my name is Tony Pike and I am the founder of CAT3C. CAT3C is designed to provide supplemental training as you work your way through your ATPL studies. We're doing this with a series of live online training sessions which allow you the opportunity to interact with a real instructor without leaving the comfort of your own home. Just think, no more traffic jams, expensive train journeys, overpriced accommodation, delayed flights or uncomfortable channel crossings. Just turn on your computer and log into our sessions on the date and time of the course from anywhere with an internet connection. Added to these sessions are the question explanation videos or QEVs. Each QEV refers to an actual EASA Part FCL ATPL examination question which the instructor will explain taking you through each step of the solution. More information on our online sessions and our three-day UK-based classroom training courses can be found at our website www.cat3c.com But for now, sit back and enjoy this QEV. Calculate the true altitude of an aircraft flying at flight level 150 where the outside air temperature is minus 30 degrees centigrade and above an airport with an elevation of 1660 feet above mean sea level and a calculated QNH of 993 hectopascals. The optional answers are A, 17,160 feet, B, 14,120 feet, C, 15,210 feet, and D, 13,660 feet. Now, in order to calculate a true altitude, we need to calculate first the indicated altitude. The only information we've been given so far is the flight level of 150, which is a pressure altitude of 15,000 feet, and the QNH of 993 hectopascals. The best thing we can do is draw a very simple diagram to show the relationship between the different altitudes. So if I start by putting in the elevation above sea level, and that elevation is 1,660 feet. That's the sea level where we know the QNH is 993 hectopascals. We also know that the aircraft is at flight level 150, which is a pressure altitude of 15,000 feet. However, the pressure altitude is not measured from sea level. It's measured from the standard pressure datum of 1013 or 1013 hectopascals. Being a larger number than 993, it's a heavier mass of air and therefore the 1013 datum will be lower. This means that the 15,000 feet pressure altitude is measured from this point. Now, even referring to the simple diagram here, we can see that the altitude above sea level, which will be shown on the aircraft altimeter with a subscale setting of 993 hectopascals, is a shorter vertical distance than the pressure altitude of 15,000 feet. In order to calculate the difference between them, we need to find out what this value is which is known as the pressure correction. Now the pressure correction is equal to the QNH minus 1013 multiplied by 30 feet. And that's a standard unit that we use 30 feet per hectopascal. Equals 993 minus 1013 times 30 equals minus 20 times 30 equals minus 600. So the pressure correction between sea level and the standard pressure datum is minus 600 feet. That tells me that the indicated altitude is going to be 600 feet less than the pressure altitude. So 15,000 
minus 600 gives me an indicated altitude above sea level of 14,400 feet. OK, let's clear off the pressure correction. Now, before I can convert the indicated altitude into a true altitude, what I need to do is to find out the height of the aircraft above ground level. And in order to do that, I simply subtract the elevation from the indicated altitude. which gives me a height above ground level of 12,740 feet. The reason we do this is that the temperature error, which is the conversion that we require to go from indicated altitude to true altitude, or vice versa, only occurs above the pressure datum. The pressure datum is the point where the pressure was measured at the aerodrome, and this is known as QFE. QNH is QFE reduced to sea level using an international standard atmosphere value of approximately 30 feet per hectopascal. The altimeter measures altitude in exactly the same way, just in the opposite direction. So that uses the international standard atmosphere to identify any altitude above sea level. Therefore, the difference between the QFE and QNH will be cancelled out by the altimeter. There will be no temperature error recorded from sea level up to the point where the pressure was originally measured. Now we've identified that the, pressure, the temperature error only occurs within that 12,740 feet. We can calculate the temperature error. And temperature error is equal to 4 feet per 1,000 feet above the pressure datum per degree of ISA deviation. What is the ISA deviation? Well, the ISA deviation is based on the difference between the actual outside air temperature and what should be the outside air temperature in a standard ISA atmosphere. To calculate that, we need to look at what should be the ISA temperature at 15,000 feet pressure altitude. And to do that, we start with a starting point of plus 15 degrees centigrade and subtract from that 2 degrees for every 1,000 feet, which gives me plus 15 minus 30 equals minus 15 degrees centigrade. So ISA equals minus 15 degrees centigrade. The actual outside air temperature is minus 30 degrees centigrade, which gives us an ISA deviation. Outside air temperature is 15 degrees colder than ISA. Clear a bit more of this board off. So putting some values into this formula, four feet, multiplied by numbers of thousands of feet, where we use the height above ground level, so 12,740 divided by 1,000 is 12.74, multiplied by minus 15. If we multiply those numbers together on the calculator, we find 4 times 12.74 times minus 15 equals approximately 765 feet. However, as we have a minus value here, we carry it over to a minus value there. So that's the temperature error correction. We now apply that not just to the height above ground level, but to the whole altitude above sea level to convert the indicated altitude into a true altitude. If I just clean that up a little bit. So we start with 14,400 feet, subtract from that 765 feet, and that gives me five, three, six, 13,635 feet true altitude. 
Looking at the optional answers, you can see that the only answer close to 13,635 is 13,660. Do not be surprised if you come up with answers slightly different to the examiner. There may be a very, very slight difference in methodology used.